Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning we are reminded of our Lord's great victory over the devil, how every temptation the devil brought to Jesus, Jesus refuted it, and so the devil cannot stand. What Jesus accomplished is for us, so that in him we are righteous and there is no condemnation. May the Lord bless us as we worship our Lord and Savior. We'll begin with our first hymn in 777. <coughs> Thank you. 
begin our worship in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We join now in singing the hymn stanzas that will be posted on the screen. Gospel lesson today 
kind of serves with the theme that the Lord Jesus gives us the victory over the devil who tempts us. Well, in the first reading, it might have seemed as if this was a temptation from the devil, but this was actually God's way of testing Abraham, strengthening Abraham's faith, and giving us a reminder of what God has done in sending his son to save us from our sins. We read from Genesis chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. Abraham answered, I am here. God said, now take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a whole burnt offering on one of the mountains. The one to which I direct you. Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, along with Isaac, his son. Abraham split the wood for the burnt offering. Then he set out to go to the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go on over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and loaded, loaded it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire pot and the knife in his hand. The two of them went on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father... He said, I am here, my son. He said, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them went on together. They came to the place that God had told him about. Abraham built the altar there. He arranged the wood, tied up. Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham said, I am here. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Because you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked around and saw that there was a ram behind him, caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. So it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will bless you greatly, and I will multiply your descendants greatly, like the stars in the sky and like the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city gates of their enemies, and your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song for today is one we haven't sung yet. It is in the blue window on the front, on page 25. We join in singing Psalm 25, a reminder that we cling to the Lord for mercy and compassion. We ask the Lord to teach us to follow it. I'd encourage you to use the hymn book to follow the notes. <laughs>
The next reading from God's will serve as the basis of the sermon. And I want to note that following the reading of this scripture reading, we will sing the gospel acclamation, which is also a new one. I might want to encourage you to have your hymnals open to that for the music on page 161. We read from the letter to the Romans chapter 8. What then will we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Who will bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, who died and more than that was raised to life, is the one who is at God's right hand and who is also interceding for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During the Lenten season, we will now be singing the verse that is posted on the screen, and you can use the music on the bottom of page 161.
reason, peace are yours and mine, from our gracious God, through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. God's word for our encouragement today has been read already from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in sports, it's the goal of either an individual or a team to win the prize, which may eventually be the championship or first place. Because there are two individuals or two teams vying for the prize, it usually is a battle. It usually is a very contested match, both struggling to outdo the other, and it often results in matches or games that are really close. But sometimes the results in sports are laughable as it's totally lopsided. One team clearly outdoing the other. Take, for example, the greatest blowout in NFL history. In 1940, the Chicago Bears beat the Washington Redskins in the championship 73-0. to Or consider the greatest Major League Baseball blowout in 2007. Texas Rangers beat the Baltimore Orioles 30 to 3. Or consider the greatest NBA blowout when, more recently, 2021, the Memphis Grizzlies beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 152 to 79. Maybe you're not a sports fan. I am, and I'm just happy my team didn't make the list for the greatest blow-up. <clears throat> but we've all with our teams have, have had plenty of losses that leave us down. And you rightfully may be wondering, why are you talking about these blow-ups in sports? What does this have to do with God's word for today? Well, Consider our greatest goal, our greatest prize, is to receive heaven. There is one who is against us, the devil. His greatest goal is that we don't make it to heaven. His greatest goal is that we get the same punishment he's deserved, that we get eternal punishment in hell. Who is winning? How is our struggle going? I would say that left to ourselves, apart from God, it is the most lopsided battle, the most, the biggest blowout in history. The devil clearly is winning because time and time again we keep repeating the same sins, dishonoring God, hurting ourselves, hurting those that we love. It's not even close. And the devil could gloat about it. I'm sure he does in his way. He could be waiting for that last day when we stand before God's courtroom and he can accuse us up and down. He can say, they lose. It's not even close. You know, God, that they're not holy as you demand they be holy. You've seen how they constantly sinned against you. That means you have to punish them. That means they go with me to hell. Based on the law of God, that would be true. But thanks be to God, there is the good news of salvation through faith in Christ. And it's because of what Christ has done, that lopsided defeat is now described in God's word for us today as being complete and utter victory. Where we have failed, Jesus has triumphed. And through faith in him, like Paul says, we are more 
than conquerors. Ours is the complete victory today because Christ justifies us in the face of Satan's accusations and because God in Christ keeps us close to him in the midst of all the devil's attacks. This is a beautiful chapter in the letter to the Romans when I got to teach at the North of Lutheran, the section on Romans. This was the highlight of the whole class. To talk about Romans 8, to hear how God works all things out for the good, that God calls us, predestines us, um, glorifies us. He takes care of everything when it comes to our salvation. And because he's taking care of it, it's a certain thing. Paul concludes this chapter by saying, What then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Yes, devil. You have a lot of scoop on us, don't you? You can accuse us up and down of doing so many things in thoughts, words, and actions that have not been in line with God's will. You have plenty to say on that courtroom day we have before our Heavenly Father. But our hope and our confidence isn't on how good we have been. Because we know we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Where then is our confidence? God is for us. The God who judges us is the one who is for us. How do we know that? Paul goes on to say, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? How do we know God is for us, that God is on our side? He didn't spare his only son. On the mountain, he provided his son, the lamb, to take away all of our sins, to make us righteous in his sight, to reconcile us to himself. It's done. It's taken care of. The Lord has redeemed us. He has made us righteous. So now Paul asks, who will bring an accusation against God's elect? The devil would be the first to raise his hand. Oh, I've got something. And he could go down commandment after commandment and talk about how we have not worshipped the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. How we haven't loved him. How we haven't listened to God's word and obeyed it. How we haven't loved our neighbor as we've loved ourselves. That could be a long courtroom case as all the things are read about the things we haven't done and the things we have done. Who can bring an accusation against us? The devil can try. But Paul says this, God is the one who justifies. God is the one who declares not guilty. And why would he declare us not guilty? Paul continues to ask, who is the one who condemns? The answer to that question, the devil. He's going to be right there saying, he, they've got to go down with me to hell. But here is how we are justified. Christ Jesus, who died and more than that, was raised to life is the one who is at God's right hand and who is also interceding for us. I stand before you today thinking, how can I say heaven is for sure for us or for me? The devil is constantly reminding me of my failures, as he does remind you too. His accusations are correct. We haven't loved God with all of our hearts. We haven't loved our neighbor as ourselves. So why should we think we get to go to heaven? Thanks be to God 
the gospel is recorded for us. And this is why it's the one thing needful, one thing we have to remind ourselves of. If God is for us, who can be against us? Devil, we beat you. God is on our team. God is on our side. How do I know? God sent his son who died for me. And Jesus justifies me from all my sin. So I can stand before you today, brothers and sisters, acknowledging I'm a sinner worthy of hell. But I can say that you, together with myself, we can be absolutely sure of heaven. Because God so loved us, he gave his one and only Son, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. text goes on to maybe add more. Well, at first we might ask more questions. How can I be sure, absolutely sure, that I'm going to go to heaven? Because a lot can happen from today till tomorrow in the future. The Apostle Paul is very confident about his salvation. We can be in ours. <coughs> Paul asks in verse 35, What will separate us from the love of Christ? And you could go in your mind and say, well, it could be my weakness, it could be neighbors tempting me, it could be I have trouble in my life that overwhelms me and I give up on God. What will separate us? Will trouble, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or sword? The Christian will suffer, the Christian will bear the cross. The early Christians, early believers said, Lord, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Life is difficult for the Christian, and we're left to wonder sometimes, apart from the word, maybe God has left us, maybe God doesn't love us, maybe he's forsaken us. But to the question, what will separate us from the love of Christ, will all of these things, a resounding no. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. That one word in the Greek is the only time I believe it's used in the whole New Testament, more than conquerors, so it's hard to translate it. But you sports fans know those shoes that got the swoosh on them? Nike? Comes from the Greek word victorious. You know the most recent NFL football game that we watched? What was it called? Super Bowl. We get our word super, and we get the name word victory from the Greek word that's used here. I told the kids at the high school, I know you can't take brand names and just put it on a t-shirt and do things with it. You can't amend it, but I imagine like a Nike swoosh on a t-shirt with maybe in the power sign a million. Because that's what we are. Victorious, 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 victorious. And we can't be beat. How can we be so confident? Paul says, I am convinced neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, one of the rulers being the devil himself, neither things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are more than conquerors through God who loves us, who keeps us close to him in Christ. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. They rest from their labors, because the Lord takes them home. Blessed are we as we go through the valley of the shadow of death, because God is still with us. If God is for us, who can be against us? So I began talking about the most lopsided of victories or losses. <laughs> Left to ourselves in the law, it would be the most lopsided of losses that the devil would have us beat. If you take what he's 
has accused us of, and we have to acknowledge, yep, you're right, I have sinned, fallen far short of the glory of God. But here comes Jesus, our advocate and friend, our Lord and Savior, who sits at the right hand of God and says, Father, I died for them. I said, rightfully, it is finished. What I came to do, redeem them, it is done. And you raised me from the dead to show that you have justified them. Where that court case didn't look so good and it looked like a total loss, we see it all in our favor now. We win. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. We are more than conquerors as he refutes all the devil's accusations, as, as he, day by day, keeps us close to him through word and sacrament. To God be the glory. Great things he has done and continues to do. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard you and keep you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join now in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. Trusting in you and your almighty power to watch over us and protect us from the lies of the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. Keep us from thinking, saying, and doing those things which dishonor you and hurt and harm our neighbor and ourselves. Give us your Holy Spirit and keep us close to you through word and sacrament. <coughs> to you, Lord Jesus, we lift our soul, trusting in you alone for our righteousness, redemption, and salvation. It is your righteous life and your precious blood that has reconciled us to God the Father and made us now to be righteous in his sight. Continue to have compassion and mercy on us whenever we fall into temptation. Do not remember our sins, but remember your gracious promises of life and salvation, which you accomplished through your atoning death on the cross. To you, O Lord, Holy Spirit, we lift our soul. Trusting in you to help us and to guide us with your word. Apart from you, we are like sheep that love to go astray, each to his own way. So teach and instruct us, that we may walk in your good and righteous ways, and so may we lead others to worship and glorify you. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you work all things for the good of those who love you, and your grace is sufficient for us in times of weakness, sorrow, and pain. We pray that you will be with those who are ill. We pray that you 
especially watch over our brothers in Christ, Sonny Rest, Lyle Kurofi, and David Shallow. Be with Sonny as he recovers from a fall and a re uh, su had surgery on a broken hip. Be with our brother in Christ, Lyle Kurofi, as he is receiving chemotherapy for his cancer. Be with our brother in Christ, David Shallow, who is receiving therapy following a couple of falls that he recently had. Lord, watch over your servants and keep them close to you. Be with their loved ones and assure them that you are their God. Assure them and us that you have forgiven us in Christ and remember our sins no more. Assure us all, you will be with us always to the very end of the age. To you be the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our thank offerings will be brought before the Lord. We are yours, your mercy sought us. Found us in death's dreadful way, to the fold in safety brought us, never more from you to stray. Your own life was freely given as an offering on the cross, for each sinner now forgiven from eternal shame and loss. Blessed by you with gifts and graces, may we heed your Spirit's call. Gladly in all times and places, give to you who gives us all. You have bought us. Now no longer can we claim to be our own, ever free and ever stronger. We shall serve you, Lord, alone. Amen. <coughs> Please rise. We continue our order of worship with Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Jesus Christ, 
Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the prayer which you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen.
to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. <coughs>
Jesus can come from Revelation, God tells us that heaven will be filled with people from every tribe, nation, and language. In this my school story, we saw by Christ alone in Beansville, Wisconsin, where their adventures around the world.
Apostle Paul told the Philippians, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks under all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which is past human minds to figure out or understand, will keep your hearts and minds safe and strong through faith in Christ Jesus. If you stop to think about it, there are all sorts of reasons to be joyful and thankful. When little babies are born, we praise the Lord. And when little babies are born again through holy baptism, I baptized a little baby in the hospital the other day. One day old, not even a day old, just a, an hour old. And I said, we are joyful in our worship in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and this little tiny newborn baby folded his little tiny hands. Joyful in confirmations when you declare your saving faith, confess your hope and trust in Jesus, and now you can come to Holy Communion. Joyful in graduations, faithful studying and learning and growing and serving. Joyful at weddings and receptions. And thankful when Jesus calls people we love safely home to heaven, they have no more troubles, no more sickness or sadness or pain or death, saved by Jesus in heaven forever. It is by grace through faith in Christ alone, found in Scripture alone, that we rejoice in the Lord always. Don't grumble, don't complain, don't feel sorry for yourself, but be joyful and thankful to Jesus our Savior. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Schultz. This month, we begin the season of Lent. Share your hope in Jesus with others. Next month, we celebrate the resurrection of the world's Savior, Jesus. Until March, remember, stay connected to Jesus. Stay connected.